Okay, we are ready right now to start um, lecture 11, part one. Lecture 11 should be broken down into three parts. Um, last time in lecture 10, we were looking at answering the question about, you know, where do these pollutants come from? We know in our natural world that um, the atmosphere is mostly made of nitrogen and oxygen, and that's just the way um, the Earth has evolved. But uh, we recognize that through human activities, especially the burning of fossil fuels, we have managed to create pollution. And so in order to, and most of the pollution comes from what we call a combustion reaction, which is a type of chemical change. Um, it's a type of a synthesis reaction, in particular in which the um, compound or the element combines with oxygen. We looked at some examples of some different combustion reactions, and then at the very end of the um, lecture last time, we looked at um, uh, some emission uh, data from a emissions test for somebody's car. And what we recognize is that um, the emission test is testing for carbon monoxide, NOx, which we haven't talked about that yet, carbon dioxide, and uh, hydrocarbons. And the hydrocarbons are also called VOCs, which stands for volatile organic compounds. So we want to continue talking about, you know, how we create these pollutants. It's a combustion reaction, yes, but we want to know what are the problems with these pollutants, um, what, what, you know, why are they dangerous to people, and then once you understand where they come from and what they do to you, you can figure out better ways to, um, to limit the production of the pollutants and or avoid them. Okay, so I'm going to switch now over to the document camera. Uh, most of our pollution issues come from uh, the burning of fossil fuels, like we said, and the, that occurs in automobile engines. That's why we looked at the emissions uh, report last time, and coal-fired power plants. Um, last unit, we were looking at uh, nuclear-powered uh, fired power plants, and there was not a, but, uh, an issue with air pollution with the um, nuclear power plants, but rather we had the issue with the spent nuclear fuel. All right, we have a whole other pile of problems with the coal-fired power plant. So we're going to look at each one of these in turn, these direct sources. We're going to look first at the automo automobile engine and um, the types of pollutants that we get from that, and then the coal-fired power plants. Okay, so um, the last time we were looking at this um, emissions report, it was sort of out of focus, so we get a chance to take a look at it again. Fortunately, let's try again. Uh, this time I'll operate the equipment better. All right, let's try to focus this up so we can see a little better. Whoops, wrong way. All right. Oh, okay, that looks good. Um, so last time we were looking at the hydrocarbons, uh, we called, uh, we said that when, normally when the EPA is reporting, um, you know, hydrocarbons as a pollutant, they call it VOCs, which stands for volatile organic co uh, compounds and hydrocarbon being the particular type of volatile um, hydrocarbon. And you know it's volatile because if you've ever pumped gas and you spilled a little bit um, on, on the ground or around your car, you recognize that it evaporates very, very quickly. So that's why it's called volatile. And in this um, emissions report, you can see, you know, they're checking somebody's car to see, you know, does do their volatile organic compounds, or in this case, hydrocarbons, fall below the what's considered a safe limit, which is where the green line is. So in this case, reading this graph would be two grams per mile, two grams output per mile driven at these various different speeds. This is what you're going to get. And we talked um, last time you can see the speed is the blue line, so you can see you're going with time faster and faster. This is faster speeds. Right down here they've stopped it, so it's just idling. Um, and this is medium speeds, okay? And you can see the, the, how the hydrocarbon, in this case, it looks like most of the um, hydrocarbons, the higher concentration occurs at the lower speeds. That makes sense because most cars, you know, the optimum speed is, is highway driving, around 50 miles an hour. And that's where the, the hydrocarbon is the, the lowest output. And then we look at the carbon monoxide, saw that the highest output was at idling or very, very low speeds again. 
We think that probably has something to do with the oxygen concentration being compromised at those low speeds. All right. And then the NOx, we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then the carbon dioxide. So this is what we looked at last time. So these are some common pollutants. The carbon dioxide, again, is not considered a pollutant. It's checked to, to check the overall efficiency of your engine. All right. So um, what's the problem with these, with these particular emissions? You know, let's look right now at the, the, the VOCs and the carbon monoxide and the carbon dioxide first. Like, who really cares um, if we have too much of that um, being output? So let's zoom back. Oops. Let's get ourselves organized. Um, all right. So what's the problem? Well, the VOCs are the hydrocarbons. Um, you know, that's a result of the incomplete combustion. And the problem with the VOCs is it turns out, I mean, you know, obvious, well, maybe not so obviously, but if you, if you breathe a high concentration of hydrocarbons, it can make you um, dizzy and give you a headache and that sort of a thing. But also, um, even more importantly, is it leads to the formation of ozone. And we will talk about this in a few minutes. Okay, that's another nasty um, character. The carbon dioxide, the problem with carbon dioxide is uh, too much carbon dioxide in our atmosphere is leading to climate change, sometimes called global warming. We're going to talk more about this later as well. Actually, um, in chapter three of the book, we'll have a whole chapter de devoted to the, to the issues around carbon dioxide and how that seemingly harmless you know, uh, gas that we all produce all the time um, is leading to climate change. Um, the carbon monoxide is really poisonous. Um, Okay, so this is just as a pollutant, um, as it comes out of your car or any other um, situation where you're burning fossil fuels in a limited oxygen um, capacity, it is a, a poison. Um, at high concentrations, it's lethal. It will kill you. At low concentrations, it can give you a headache, dizzy, and nauseous. And it can be very serious for people who already have cardiovascular disease because it's compromising the amount of um, oxygen that is, um, it, that is carried to their body, and it puts stress and strain on their heart and lungs, which can lead to a heart attack. So the reason why it's a problem is because the carbon monoxide blocks the absorption of oxygen in your lungs. You know, when you breathe in air, your um, hemoglobin in the, your red blood cells is a type of a protein in your red blood cells that makes your red, your red blood cells red, um, but the hemoglobin picks up oxygen in your lungs and carries it to the parts of your body and deposits it and then picks up um, carbon dioxide and carries it back to your lungs for it to be exhaled. That's how, you know, your body works. And the problem with carbon monoxide is, is that it will attach to the very same place on that hemoglobin where the oxygen needs to attach on the iron in your, in your hemoglobin molecule. It will attach and it will not come off. So whereas oxygen attaches on and off, on and off, uh, you know, depending on the pH of your blood and whatnot, it's going to pick up the oxygen, it's going to dump it off where your body needs it, and it's going to pick up carbon dioxide on the way back um, to the lungs, the blood, the blood does. But the carbon monoxide sticks right, right to that hemoglobin in your red blood cells, and it, um, then once the carbon monoxide is stuck on, the hemoglobin is no longer available to pick up oxygen. That's why um, over time, uh, more and more of your, um, your blood will get um, saturated with the carbon monoxide, and then you are carrying less and less oxygen to your uh, body. That's why you get a headache and dizzy and feel sick to your stomach first, because that's your, the effect of depleting your um, brain of oxygen. And then finally, you'll pass out. And if you, you have no way of moving your body away from the carbon monoxide, then it can, it can kill you. So it's, it's nasty, um, nasty, nasty, nasty. So um, obviously, uh, we recognize that. Um, even, i just tell you a little side story. Um, in um, traffic police in, J in some cities in Japan, where it's very, very densely populated and they have a lot of car traffic, the traffic police, because there's so much carbon monoxide emissions, will have to take breaks where they go breathe in 100% oxygen um, from an oxygen tank. And, and under that situation where you have a very, very high concentration of oxygen, like, you know, in air, it's only about 20%. But if you have, if you breathe in 100% oxygen, it's enough to knock the carbon monoxide off. 
And so you can be treated for carbon monoxide sickness or poisoning, but you have to get, um, get yourself some 100% some oxygen from an oxygen tank. Okay, so you can be treated, but it, it, you know, you've got to catch it in time. So sometimes people who are exposed chronically to carbon monoxide will have to go breathe some 100% oxygen to, to knock that carbon monoxide off.